So hey everyone, welcome back to Rebecca's Colouring Arts and Crafts. So I just thought I would try and do this because I know I haven't had much book content or colouring stuff because of all of this hand and wrist stuff lately going up and well for the last two years I haven't had it as much and I really really want to get back into it so I'm trying to work on it and I'm currently working on a um oh, sorry on a vlog slash tutorial with this and I've downloaded an audio book from one of my review books as well because I really want to get back to those things but yeah, it's been really held up with this, unfortunately. But I just thought I would do a book haul of some of the books that I have received lately. So we've got some Goldsboro books, some Fairy Lit books, and just some normal book depository books that continue series or finish series. So um, the first books that I'll do is this one from Fairy Loot. This is Namesake, which is the second book in Fable by Adrian Young. This is a Fairy Loot exclusive. So... It's got an exclusive dust jacket. Sorry, I'm just trying to do this with my hand and wrist. Um, sprayed edges. It's not glitter sprayed edges like the other one, just because for some reason apparently they couldn't get that to work. It's, um, let's see, nothing special in the dust jacket or the undercover. Kind of furnished to open, so. Hopefully that's not going to be an issue. It's signed by Adrian Young. And yeah, this is the second book in Fable. I think this finishes the series, but I'm not sure. But yeah, so very excited to have that and add that to my collection. I've also got here, this is um, book two of Star Wars The High Republic series um, from the Goldsboro Books Editions. I do actually have the first book of this, um, which came in the sci-fi fantasy fellowship subscription for goldsboro books so this is the rising storm by kevin scott so nothing really special with the undercover um goldsboro books does put them in special protective dust jackets um oh i didn't read the description of the other one sorry whoops um obviously it's a star wars novel and there are all these other Star Wars novels as well, apparently. Um, but we don't have them all yet. Oh, well, most of them we don't have. The High Republic ones are the ones that I'm getting. Um, this is 535 or 1000, which matches the number of my last copy that I got. And it's got a bit of novels timeline and stuff in here as well to help you out with it. Um, so I'll just... See if I can read this. So this says, following the dramatic events of Light of the Jedi, the heroes of the High Republic era return to face a shattered peace and a fearsome foe. In the wake of the hyperspace disaster and the heroism of the Jedi, the Republic continues to grow, bringing more worlds together under a single unified banner. Under the leadership of Chancellor Lena So, the spirit of unity extends throughout the galaxy with the Jedi and the newly established Starlight Beacon Station at the Vanguard. In celebration, the Chancellor plans the Republic Fair, a showcase of the possibilities and the peace of the expanding Republic, a peace the Jedi hope to foster. Stellan Gios, Bel Zetifar, Elizabeth Mann and others join the event as ambassadors of harmony. But as the eyes of the galaxy turn towards the fair, so too does the fury of the Nil Hill, Knee Hill. Their leader, Marchion Rowe, is intent on destroying this unity. His storm descends on the pageantry in celebration, sowing chaos and exacting revenge. As the Jedi struggle to curb the carnage of the rampaging Knee Hill, they come face to face with the true fear their enemy plans to unleash across the galaxy, the kind of fear from which even the Force cannot shield them. So that sounds very, very awesome and very excited for it. It also has green sprayed edges. And I'll just go back and I'll read the description of Namesake. So this says, Trader, fighter, legend. With the Marigold ship free of her father, Fable and its crew were set to start over. That freedom is short-lived when she becomes a pawn in a, in a notorious thug scheme. In order to get her to her intended destination, she must help him to secure a partnership with Holland, 
a powerful gem trader who is more than she seems. As Fable descends deeper into a world of betrayal and deception, she learns that the secrets her mother took to her grave are now putting the people Fable cares about in danger. If Fable is going to save them, she must risk everything, including the boy she loves and the home she has finally found. So that sounds awesome. And sorry, I'm just itchy for some reason. I always get the itches when I have to record. I don't know why. I've also got here, this is the... I'm pretty certain this is the final book of um, Margaret Owen's, oh, which series is it? Um, I'm trying to remember the series. But I got the first book, with, oh, The Merciful Crow. The first book of The Merciful Crow, I actually got in a fairy loot book box and they didn't continue the next one there. So this is called The Faithless Hawk by Margaret Owen. And it's just a normal, oops, sorry, the trying to hold this with my arm under it so that it's not hurting my wrist so much and it fell sorry about that so this is the second and final book in the sequel of the merciless crow series and it's just a normal book depository edition so nothing really special about it but this says a dead king an empty throne a lost god and a treacherous road for the crows as the new chieftain of the crows fee knows better than to expect a royal to keep his word Still, she's hopeful that Prince Jasma will fulfil his oath to protect her fellow crows. But then black smoke fills the sky, signalling the death of King Surima and igniting Queen Ruthsana's merciless bit for the throne. With the Witch Queen rising, with the Witch Queen using the deadly plague to unite Sabor against the crows and to grow her monstrous army, Fi and her band are forced to go into hiding. But as the plague ravages the country, they're all running out of time before the crows starve in exile and the nation is lost forever. Desperate, Fee calls on old allies to help take Ruzana down from within her own walls. To survive, Fee must unravel not only Ruzana's plot, but ancient secrets of the crows. Secrets that could save her people or set the world ablaze. Margaret Owen crafts the gripping sequel to The Merciful Crow, in which kings become outcasts, lovers become foes, and dead gods rise. So very excited to finish that book in the series as well. I've also got book two here of Legacy of Steel by Matthew Ward. I did get book one from Goldsboro Books, um, which is in my room. And I've also got book three ordered from Goldsboro Books, but unfortunately they were able, unable to get book two, just which is Legacy of Steel, um, just because of COVID and stuff like that. So it was unable to be signed and all of that so um yeah i just had to get legacy of steel by matthew ward in just a normal book depository edition and so this book says warfare myth and magic collide in legacy of steel the spectacular sequel to matthew ward's acclaimed fantasy debut legacy of ash a year has passed since an unlikely alliance saved the tresian republic from fire and darkness at great cost thousands perished and victor Akadra, the Republic's champion, has disappeared. While the ruling council struggles to mend old wounds, other fractions sense opportunity. The insidious parliament of crows schemes in the shadows, while to the east, the Hadari emperor, emperor gathers his armies. As turmoil spreads across the Republic, its ripples are felt in the realms of the divine. War is coming, and this time gods themselves will take sides. So this is meant to be like an epic fantasy series. But yeah, I've got book three pre-ordered through Goldsboro Books. So I'll have book one and two signed, but book three unfortunately isn't signed. But yeah, you've just got details of the books in here to help you out. And yeah, it's awesome. And I can't wait to get back to doing more of my reading and colouring stuff and that with time. I really, really do look forward to it. I've also got book three in the Lifelike series by Jay Kristoff here. Um, I did manage to get book one and two signed when I saw Jay Kristoff at a talk in like 2019 or something, I think it was in Melbourne. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to finish this series. Like they're signed and personalised, obviously, because I went to a talk by him. But yeah, this is just another book depository edition. So this says... It comes down to this. Best friends have become enemies. Love has been betrayed. And deciding whose side you're on could be the difference between life and death. 
in a world on the cusp of fresh apocalypse. But Eve and Lemon discovering the truth about themselves and each other was only the beginning. But now caught up in a battle bigger than all of them, there's little time to mourn their pasts. On pasts. On one side, Biomass is assembling a deadly horde of bioengineered killing machines and clones to take control of the country. On the other, a Dedalus army is prepared to destroy that country to defend it. It's a war that would change the shape of the USA, and Eve and Lemon are caught right in the middle of it. But worst of all, Gabriel and his fellow lifelikes are determined to access a nano program that will liberate every, ro- every robot in the country and wipe humanity from the face of the planet. If ever there was a bad time to be human, this is it. In the end, loyalties will be pushed to the brink, questionable alliances will shake the earth, and heartbreaking choices will reveal that heroes can be found in the most unlikely of places. So yeah, very excited to add this to my collection and just um, continue it. (laughs) I've also... The final book depository book that I've got here before I go into Goldsboro Books July subscription for Goldsboro Book for Premier and GSFF and the July, July Fairy Loot is um, book eight in Diana Galbadon's Outlander series. And this is for written in my own heart's blood. So, oh no, it's not the last one. There's a second last one. Um, so <laughs> I've sort of been slowly, shall we say, collecting the Diana Galvedon, Gabaldon books in hardcover for a while, but the only one I'm missing out of these, like I've been collecting the collector's editions as well. I've got all the collector's editions, including book one, but I don't have book one of the hardcover, the big hardcovers in it, but um, that's like $90 or more now for that single book, for book one, so... Not sure if I'll get it. These aren't the cheapest because they're quite thick. But, yeah, I really want to get to reading this series. I started watching the series on Netflix and haven't finished it. But I want to get back to it eventually. So this is book eight in Written in My Own Heart's Blood. And we've got book nine. And I think there's one final book after that, which is book ten in Claire and Jamie Fraser's story. And that's it for um, the original Outlander cast, I guess you could say. So, well, as you can see too, it's got the Atlanta family tree and stuff there too. But our description of the book says, In her now classic novel Atlanta, Diana Gabaldon told the story of Claire Randall, an English ex-combat nurse who walks through a stone circle in the Scottish Highlands in 1946 and disappears into 1743. The story unfolded from there in seven best-selling novels and has been called A Grand Adventure. Written on a canvas that probes the heart, weighs the soul, and measures the human spirit across centuries. Now the story continues in Written in My Own Heart's Blood. 1778. France declares war on Great Britain. The British Army leaves Philadelphia and George Washington's troops leave Valley Forge in pursuit. At this moment, Jamie Fraser returns from a presumed watery grave to discover that his best friend has married his wife, His illegitimate son has discovered, to his horror, who his father really is, and his beloved nephew, Ian, wants to marry a Quaker. Meanwhile, Jamie's wife, Claire, and his sister, Jenny, are busy picking up the pieces. The Frasers can only be thankful that their daughter, Brianna, and her family are safe in 20th century Scotland. Or not. In fact, Brianna is searching for her own son, who was kidnapped by a man determined to learn her family's secrets. Her husband, Roger, has ventured into the past in search of the missing boy, never suspecting that the object of his quest has not left the present. Now with Roger out of the way, the kidnapper can focus on his true target, Brianna herself. Written in my own heart's blood is the brilliant next chapter in the masterpiece of the imagination unlike any other. So very excited to add book eight to my collection so I can hopefully go through once I can read more and binge read some of the Atlanta series. And I've got the final book here is Iron Heart by Nina Varela. And I actually um, received from someone um, the Cryer's War, um, uh, Cryer's War Owl Crate Edition. So this isn't signed or anything like the Owl Crate Edition, but I just wanted to finish the series. And so this one says, um, an unstoppable love between two girls, one human, one, one maid. 
both set on destroying the Iron Heart. For too long, the cruel, beautiful Otome have lorded over the kingdom of Rabu, oppressing the humans who live there. But the human revolution is on the rise, and at its heart is Ayla, once handmaiden, now fugitive. Ayla escaped the palace of Lady Cryer, the girl Ayla had planned to kill, but instead fell in love with. Now Ayla has pledged her allegiance to Queen, Queen June, whom she believes can accomplish the ultimate goal of the human rebellion, destroy the Iron Heart. Without it, the Otome will be weakened to the point of extinction. But playing it at Ayala's memory are the powerful feelings she developed for Cryer. And unbeknownst to her, Cryer has also fled the palace, taking up with travelling rebels determined to find and protect Ayala. As their paths collide, neither is prepared for the dark secret underlying the Iron Heart. In this stunning sequel to acclaimed author Nina Varela's Cryer's War, the love that launched a revolution must now pave the way for a whole new era and the ultimate change of heart. So yeah, very excited to have that one in my collection as well. So now what I've got here is the Goldsboro Books Premier and GSFF Club for the month of July. And I have unbubble wrapped these to make it easier with one hand. <laughs> well, hopefully easier. And the first one we got here is the Goldsboro Books Premier Club um, edition. And this is Hope Nicely's Lessons for Life by Carolyn Day. So it's just a hardcover edition. And on the back it says, my name is Hope Nicely. Why am I writing this book? That's easy. This book is going to change my life. Hope Nicely hasn't had an easy life, but she's happy enough living with her mum, Jenny Nicely, and she loves her job, walking other people's dogs. She's a bit different, but as Jenny always tells her, she's a rainbow person, a special drop of light. It's just, there's something she needs to know. Why did her birth mother abandon her in a cardboard box on a church step 25 years ago? And did she know that drinking while pregnant could lead to Hope being born with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder? In a bid to find her birth mother and the answers to these questions, Hope decides to write her autobiography. Despite having been bullied throughout school, she bravely joins an evening class where she will not only learn the lessons of writing, but may also begin to discover more about the world around her, about herself, and even make some friends. But when Jenny suddenly falls ill, Hope realises there are many more lessons to come. So this has bluey sprayed edges. Oh, it's a little dinted there. Bugger. I guess I'll straighten it out after. But it's come in pretty much perfect condition because God's Rare Books really bubble wraps these. And I have unfortunately had to skip the September Goldsboro Books Premier and GSFF sub, unfortunately. So this is number 1,293 of 1,500 numbered copies. And it's signed, which is awesome. And it's the first edition. But yeah, I'm kind of disappointed I had to skip um, the September one. But unfortunately, I just didn't have the funds for it for the month of September. So I've had to skip GSFF and... Um, I had to skip GSFF and the Premier Club editions for September. But, um, yeah, I've paid, well, basically paid for all the books. Like, I didn't get discounts for the books for the month of September that are meant to be coming to me. So, yeah, um, I just paid out all of those so that they're done and I've got them there. And, yeah, it's sorted basically with September payments and yeah um hopefully I don't have to skip again because I really love getting the Goldsboro Books editions because they're so different from what you would usually get and all the rest so I really like them but you have to do what you have to do I guess so unfortunately so the next one you got here is The Gauntlet and the Fist Beneath by Ian Green and let me just see. Protect your people, fight for your family, destroy your enemies. And this has sprayed lightning edges. Oh, that's cool. So we got a lightning streak on the 
front cover of the dust jacket, of the hard cover. So in here we've got Fight the Storm. The endless rot storm rages over the ruins of the Ferran Empire. Floor would never let the slavers of the Empire rise again. As a warrior of the Storm Guard Commando, she wrought hor horrors in the rot storm to protect her people. She did her duty and left the bloodshed behind. Floor's peace is shattered when blazing orbs of light cut through the night sky and descend on her village. Her daughter is abducted and Flora is forced into a chase across the, a land of twisted monsters and ancient gods. She must pursue the mysterious orbs, whose presence could herald the return of the empire she spent her entire life fighting. Now Flora must take up the role she had sworn to put aside and become the weapon the Storm Guard trained her to be, to save not only her daughter, but her people. So this is the first edition and it's signed and numbered. So this is number 124 of 1,500 number copies of the first edition of the Gauntlet and the Fist Beneath. So yeah, very excited to add these to my collection. Um, yeah, I don't like having to skip my Gold Rare Books Premier Club editions, but sometimes you have to when you just don't have the money for things, unfortunately. And that's the case currently because I've got a whole heap of medical bills and stuff coming up. So yeah, um, the last thing that I've got here is my Fairy Lit July book, um, July book box subscription. And I have not opened this up or looked in this yet, so this is the first time looking in it. So I have no idea what the book is or anything. So this is Tales Retold, the July 2021 book subscription box. And I wanna do book photos of these tomorrow, hopefully. So the first thing I got in here, I'm guessing, is like a tea tin. And I'll just get up the details. So be glad of your human heart. Pity those who don't feel anything at all. Sarah J Mars. So this is obviously a Sarah J Mars edition. Oh, I'm just going to check what it is. So it says... We had to include an item by one of the most known YA retellings of Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Maas. This gorgeous thing was designed by the talented at Chatty Nora. Can you spot the wings? So I haven't actually read Court of, Th Thorn Court of Thorn and Roses series yet, but yeah, I've got them in paperback on my bookcase. But yeah, very excited to have it. Um, I can't open it one-handed, I don't think. No. I can't, but yeah, very excited to have it. We've also got what looks like a book sleeve, is it? We're so happy to present to you your new book sleeve. We've improved it even further by using the same material we use on our pencil cases, which you know and love. It features artwork by none other than the amazing at Rosie Thorns 88, and the piece features the main characters from the Blood of Stars duology by Elizabeth Lim. So they did recently have the Blood of Stars duology in fairy lit exclusive editions but i i didn't um get that series because i just didn't have the money so i think i have a feeling what's in this box now if i remember correctly but so this is our little book sleeve um i'm not sure i kind of liked the padded cloth book sleeves but it's nice anyway so yeah, definitely unique and pretty. Yeah, I love it. So let's just move some of these. So this looks like an umbrella. Do I have more than one umbrella? I can't remember. But it'll be handy in the wet season or when I go to Darwin to have this to use. Heartless umbrella. So this says, um, nobody can rain on your parade when you have a snazzy bookish umbrella. The design is brought to you by Team Fairy Lit and is inspired by an Alice in Wonderland retelling, Heartless by Marissa Meyer. Carry it with you just in case of unexpected summer rain. So I don't actually have um, that book in my series, but yeah, very excited to have this. I just want to see a bit what it's like. Oh, cool. Snazzy. That's actually cool. I like it. So I'll put that on properly after, but yeah, very much like that. It might be handy when I go to Darwin or something. 
if I get to go, depending on COVID. We've also got a set of what looks like bookish socks in here. Cinderella is dead, crew socks. So I haven't read this book either. A lot of these typically I haven't read or seen, but I just like the items anyway. And yeah, it's always fun to have these items, even if I don't have the books and haven't read the books. Like one thing that I don't have any books of is V.E. Schwab. I think it is. And it's like, I know that's very popular with everyone else, but it's just, I'm more focused on getting a few new books like these ones from Goldsboro Books and Fairy Loot and then basically focusing on finishing series is my main focus when I get books these days. So Cinderella's Dead Socks. So we hope you'll love these bookish socks designed by the amazing at Katarina Book Designs. The design was inspired by a Cinderella retelling called Cinder Cinderella's Dead written by Kaylin Bayron. And I think I just saw what the book is there. It just mentioned what our featured book is. So, yes. Oh, hang on. There's, my, there's our tarot cards. So. Okay, so these are inspired by Caraval by Stephanie Garber. So I'm guessing we've got... Um, Oh, I can't think of a name and oh, I can't think of their names, but I, I've read the first book, but haven't read the others yet, but yeah, hope to get to it eventually. And we've also got, what is this? This is just an art print. That's cute. Um, I'm sorry. Just give me a minute to get this out of the way. So let's see what our art print is based on. So, this beautiful foil print showcases artwork by the lovely at Kavon Kale and features Maya from the Star Touch Queen series by Roshani Ch Chokshishi, I think it is. And I haven't read that series and don't own it either, but. Yeah, very excited to have them. And these are our tarot cards too, which are very, very pretty. It's either Scarlet or Teller, I'm pretty certain that one is. And I think it's Jack or basically Caraval, the fella that's considered to be Caraval. And then our book in here. Let's see, I'm actually going to sit you down whilst I get this out. Because my hand and wrist is getting sore. And so this is, okay. Well, it's got the title there. So we've got our original fairy loot bookmark for this month. Let me just pick you up and show you this. So we've got our fairy loot bookmark for this month. We've also got our author letter, which says, Dear Fairy Loot Reader, I have a little trove in my room where I tuck away all the stones that I've, all the stories that I've written. Inside an aquafile cabinet is a copy of almost every short story, piece of fan fiction, journal and novel that I've penned since childhood. Each at one point warmed my heart and ignited my imagination. And I find myself revisiting this trove now more than ever during these trying times to recover a little piece of that wonder. Six Crimson Cranes is the newest story to join that trove. And though I trust the world will be a brighter place by the time you open this box, please allow it to transport you to a world of shape-shifting dragons, flying paper birds, of piping hot... Oops, sorry, I was playing with my puzzle without realising it and I don't want to lose pieces. Um, piping hot fish soup and red threads of fate. She Shiori is my boldest hero to date. And I love her as if she were my oldest, truest, as if she were one of my oldest, truest friends. I hope her story touches your heart and shines some light into your life. Always, Elizabeth Liam, I'm guessing it is. So we've also got our fairy scoop, Tales Retold. 
which has a bit of information from the author and what are exclusive editions. I wish that you could see the the original normal edition as well in here like you used to, but you can now no longer see that. So, But it says it's got an exclusive cover, stencil spread edges, signed by the author, artwork on the reverse of the dust jacket, foil embossing on the hardcover. So our book is Six Crims and Cranes. And let's see, how can I do this? Sorry, just trying to do this is a bit awkward. So we got sprayed purple on the bottom, cranes on the sprayed edges. This is our spine, our back cover, a princess in exile, a shape-shifting dragon, six enchanted cranes, and an unspeakable curse. It will take more than magic to find their way home. Inside. Ooh, that's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And our dust jacket here. Undercover dust jacket artwork. Pretty. So this says, Shiori Am Anima, the only princess of Kyoto, has a secret forbidden magic runs in her veins. And on the morning of her betrothal ceremony, Shiori loses control. At first, her mistake seems like a stroke of luck for stalling the wedding that she never wanted. But it also catches the attention of Rakuma, her stepmother. A sorceress in her, her own right, Rakuma, Rekima banishes the young princess, turning her brothers into cranes and warning Shiori that she must speak of it to no one. For with every word that escapes her lips, one of her brothers will die. Penniless, voiceless and alone, Shiori searches for her brothers and uncovers a dark conspiracy to seize the throne. Only Shiori can set the kingdom to rights, but to do so she must place her trust in a paper bird, a mercurial dragon and the very boy she fought so hard not to marry. And she must embrace the magic she's been taught all her life to contain, no matter what it costs. So I'm just going to sit you down here whilst I put that book up again. Whilst I put it back together. But yeah, that sounds awesome. Oh, that spine is pretty too. I just have to show you the spine quickly. Very pretty. Very, very pretty. I so will just back away and then we'll check the inside so yep it's signed fairly exclusive signed edition of six crimson and cranes and so i've got spin the dawn from the our trade edition which is signed I unravel the dust as just normal book depository edition, but so cool to have this. Shame I didn't get, wasn't able to get the fairy loop matching editions of the other two, but all good. So yeah, that's um, my book haul slash unboxing for this month. I really hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please leave a like, subscribe, comment. I always love hearing from you and I will see you later. Bye.